All right. Well, I just want to say welcome to the gathering, and I'm not sure if I'm the first up or if you've already seen Bree and Dustin and doing their things, uh, but I said I would do the music, and I was going to do some guitar and some kids' songs, and I thought, you know what, it's Easter week, and I thought it would be fun to do maybe do a couple Easter hymns, and as I thought about what hymns to sing, uh, there's two that really came up that reminded me a lot of my mom. She led music in my home church for all the years that I can remember. And the Old Rugged Cross and He Lives were pretty big staple hymns in my home church, uh, whether it was Easter or even any other time of the year. They seem to get played a lot. And so when I came across them when searching for music, I was like, you know, I'm going to sit down at the piano and I'm going to sing these old hymns for you. And you'll, you'll know them hopefully well enough to just be able to sing along. There isn't going to be any words on the screen. And uh, you can just sit back and listen, or you can sing along with. And then I have a third song that I'll explain when I get there. So why don't we start with the Old Rugged Cross. On a hill far away stood the old rugged cross, an emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, the old rugged cross so despised by the world as a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left His glory above to bear it to a dark Calvary. I cherish the old rugged cross until my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it some. For a crown The whole rugged cross Stained with blood so divine A wondrous beauty I see for t'was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died To pardon and sanctify me So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies are last I lay down 
I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown and exchange it someday for a crown. My name is Bree, and I am your children's pastor here at Summerland Baptist Church. When Dell asked us to be a part of the gathering this week, I right away started to think about what could we add. And I wondered if it would be really valuable and helpful and encouraging for you guys to see the videos that we make every week for SBC Kids. We film here in building at SBC and we film three different videos. We have a preschool video we film, a kindergarten to grade three, and an age or grade four to five video. We take different elements that our curriculum gives us of video and then we add our own personal touch at SBC into it. We know it's really important for the kids to see our faces. As we can't teach them in person right now, we are still working really hard at teaching them about Jesus with the technology we have available to us. And so the video you're going to see next is made specifically for kids between, between kindergarten and grade three. So these videos, we always add a host in, and this month of April, our host is Isaiah Young. He starts the show out and he ends it. And his role is to help the kids really relate to him and to the lessons that he's learning. And as long as he learns, the kids learn alongside of him. We often add things um, to our video like, a memory verse, we tell the Bible story, we might have a greeting at the, the front part of the video, or maybe we add ourselves in as, as part of a story that is told. This week, the one that you're going to see, Carolyn is going to tell you the Bible story. So, super exciting for our kids to see our faces every week. They're still learning about Jesus. We encourage families to watch the videos together as they then hear the lessons and the things that their kids are learning, and they can continue to talk about those truths all week long. So we really hope you enjoy our videos. Thank you for listening, and see you later. My name is Izzy, and I have something very important to say. Happy Easter! Mia, oh yeah, ho, ho, yeah! Easter is my favorite day in the entire year. One, because jelly beans. And two, because God pulled off the most amazing miracle. And he showed the world how to have peace. And on Easter, we celebrate how God mm, made peace with us. They should call it Peaster. <laughs> or maybe not. You're probably thinking, why would God need to make peace with me? We're on an argument. Well, that's a long story. A really long story. We have to go the way, all the way back to the beginning. It goes like this. People, get it? People. The people were really close to God. And then something bad happened. Something really bad. And it separated God from the people. God's friendship with us was broken. And something had to be done. But don't worry. God had a plan. And you'll find out all about it in today's story. The greatest story ever told. The story of Easter. Easter. Easter, yeah? Easter, God's plan, jelly bees. Okay, one more. Okay, one more. That's not a jelly bean. It's chocolate. The Bible, it's 66 books of history 
Stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the entire Bible. In the beginning, God created a magnificent paradise. He filled it with everything that was good. There was water and land and plants and trees and birds and animals. And then from the very dust, he created a man, Adam. And he created the first woman, Eve. They were the first two people on earth, living peacefully in paradise. Adam and Eve were friends with God. But then they made a terrible choice. You see, God had given them one rule. You must not eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you do, you will certainly die. But the temptation was too great for Adam and Eve. They broke God's one rule. And what had once been a paradise became a broken world. People started telling lies. It was the woman you put here with me. She made me eat it. Brother fought against brother. Ah! No! Selfishness spread through the generations. Where there had once been peace in paradise, now there was sin and pain and death that separated people from their creator. But God had a plan to make peace once again with the people that he loved so much. Hundreds of years after Adam and Eve broke his one rule, God chose a man named Abraham, and he said, All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. Look up at the sky. Count the stars if you can. That's how many children will be born into your family. So Abraham had a son, Isaac. And when Isaac grew up, he had two sons, Jacob and Esau. And Jacob and Esau grew up and they had children of their own. In fact, Jacob, who God later renamed Israel, had 12 sons of his own. So, God had given Abraham a huge family, just like he'd promised. But God's people, the Israelites, were still lost and broken and separated from him. God's people still didn't have peace. They didn't have peace when God rescued them from slavery in Egypt and when he made a way for them to escape their enemies by going straight through the Red Sea. Okay, great. But what are we supposed to eat out here in the desert? <laughs> Sand? <laughs> the nation of Israel didn't have peace when God gave them a new law. These commandments are hard. We want a king like all the other nations. They didn't even get peace when God gave them a king. The king's laws are no fair. We want a new God, like all the other nations. Nope. Nothing gave God's people lasting peace. They were still lost and broken and separated from God for thousands of years. But God had not forgotten the promise that he made to Abraham so long ago. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. God still had the plan to show the people just how much he loved them. He knew that this broken world would never find a way to rescue itself. So God made a way. God sent his son, Jesus, to come and show peace to the whole world once and for all. Now Jesus grew up and he showed people grace and compassion and love and forgiveness. Jesus healed the sick he befriended the outcast. He saw when things were wrong and he made it right. He loved the whole world so deeply that he chose to give his life on a cross and he died for the sins of everyone and he paid the price for everyone in the whole world. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. In Colossians, in the Bible, the Apostle Paul tells us that God made peace with his people through Christ's blood, through Jesus' death on the cross. 
You see, when Jesus chose to give up his life on the cross, not only did he pay for all of the sins that had been committed already, but he also paid for all of the sins that were yet to be committed. People no longer had to be separated from God. But in the three dark days following Jesus' death, the people who followed him didn't understand any of this yet. In fact, they hid away in the dark, afraid that they might be arrested like Jesus was, or even killed. Who's there? Now, early on the morning of the third day, Mary of Magdalene arrived at the home where the disciples were staying. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. The disciples stared at each other in shock. Then Peter and John jumped up and lunged for the door, and they raced all the way back to the tomb where Jesus' body had been laid. The tomb really is empty. There are the linen cloths they wrapped him in. Peter and John returned home. They were still uncertain and confused. But Mary of Magdalene, who had followed them back to the garden, stayed there, and as she was weeping, she noticed a man standing to the side, and at first, she thought he was the gardener. Sir, did you carry Jesus away? Tell me where you put him. Mary. The instant the man spoke, she knew it was Jesus. He was alive again. Teacher! Overjoyed, Mary returned to the disciples to share this incredible news with them. I have seen the Lord! It was true. Jesus had come back from the dead. He is more powerful than sin. He's more powerful than death. And because of him, we can have peace with God. And we can work towards having peace with others around us, just the way that God intended from the very beginning. So, it's like this. Every moment of history, every moment in God's story, led up to life, death, and the resurrection of God's Son, Jesus. Sin separated people from God. And that was a problem that we couldn't fix. So God sent his son, Jesus. And after Jesus' death, he beat sin. And after he beat sin, he even beat death. So I guess you could say that Jesus was like a bridge that connected people to God. That made it possible for God to reconnect with us. The Apostle Paul once wrote, God was pleased to bring all things back to himself. God made peace through Christ's blood by Jesus' death on the cross. Because of Jesus, we can be close to God again. We're at peace. Jesus is alive. And he's built a bridge that'll last for forever. Think about that this Easter. Think about that every day. Really think about what Jesus did for you and tell God how thankful you are. And don't just keep it to yourself. Tell all the people around you. Share the peace of God with everybody. Tell others about Jesus or love people like Jesus who loves us. Chocolate, joy bean, joy bean, chocolate. Chocolate. See you next time. Hi, I'm Dustin, the youth pastor here at Summerline Baptist. As Bree and I talked about what to share with you in this service, we landed on this passage in Philippians chapter 2. And the youth are actually going to be reading that passage out to you shortly. But I just wanted to highlight something that really stuck out to us which is in um, verse 6, that though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. And as we look forward to Easter, to celebrate Easter together this weekend, we're looking at this humility of Jesus, this beautiful love that he shows in coming into our story, being present, God with us, and sacrifices himself. Such a beautiful truth that all of us are desperate for and need. And as we think about serving the children in our church and the youth in our church, that's the same heart we want to bring, 
is a heart, a servant's heart, a heart to serve our children, our youth, with this love of Jesus. And the last couple weeks leading up till this week, Bree and I both had been involved in a very busy schedule, running program for children and for youth. And for me, the focus in our activities for youth was on just being together, on presence, on serving. And so we did a lot of different activities over those two weeks. And I want to share with you a slideshow of just what that looked like. And we had an awesome time. And I was amazed at how God worked in such simple moments. There wasn't any planned teaching time. There wasn't any sort of singing time. It was all about being together intentionally to connect and build relationship. And so we hiked. We spent time at the skate park uh, cook cooking up hot dogs. And we played ultimate frisbee in the park. We played games here at the church. We went skating. And all of those activities at different times, different youth reached out. Sitting, maybe helping them tie their skates, maybe on a hike and ended up kind of at the tail end of the pack, ended up chatting just with one youth together, just the two of us and sharing stories, um, cooking hot dogs at the skate park. There were moments where youth reached out and asked really beautiful questions, really significant, meaningful questions of faith and struggle. And I was just amazed that God is present in just the simplest places and moments. And so that's kind of been on our heart. And I hope that you can carry that message into your heart today, that Jesus was willing to give up everything he had for you to be present with you in your moments right now. The simple moments that don't seem like much, the hard moments, the celebrations in your life, he wants to be present in all of them. And we celebrate this God who would give up heaven to be with us here on earth. That his divinity wasn't something that he felt he had to grasp onto and lord over us and say, I'm God, I'm God, you need to bow down and you need to worship me. He came and made himself one of us and came along right beside us and did a lot of walking, a lot of talking and sharing stories and building relationship. And that's what we are pursuing to do with our children in our community, our youth in our community. And I pray that today and this weekend, as we celebrate Easter, that you would remember that your God is so interested in you. He was willing to give up everything he has to be with you and to restore relationship with you so that all of us could be together forever. So be encouraged today and enjoy this slideshow of our two weeks of spring break activities together. And uh, a few of our youth will read this passage that I'm referring to at the end. Be blessed, everybody. Wish we could all be together and look forward to that again soon.